Hey everyone, and welcome to the final finish of our bowling alley table. Yes, check out the dots. So, I'm gonna be finishing off with a 220 grit palm sander. Uh, we got as far as we could with a 120 grit on a belt sander that we rented from Home Depot for a day. It didn't take long, made a lot of quick work with the belt sander. First, we used an 80 grit to really take off a lot of the finish, and get rid of a lot of the kinks, dents, scratches, what have you and then get a little softer with a 120. And then the belt sander with a 220 was pretty good after the 120, made quick work of things. Uh, we also came around the edges here. And with the 120, we even went over a lot of the nails. And uh, we actually like a look, the look of some of the nails. We even tried to soften up some of these holes. We're not sure what those are from with files and just kind of came around all of the edges here with uh, 120. So we haven't done a 220 on there. Grit sandpaper. Um, but for the most part, I'm doing the last brush at the top. We've got it inside. We've done everything we could We outside uh, where ventilation is nice. Now, as you can see in the background, I got two fans. Those are pointed outward through the windows. I'm going to hopefully try and pull, do enough, as they would call it, like a negative pressure in the room. That way, I'm closing these dining room doors and I've closed all the room doors and I've closed the kitchen doors, pretty much closed all doors and left on all the exterior rooms that lead to this room, I left all the windows and doors open that I can in those rooms. Why? Because as I bring the pressure in this room down, at least this is the plan, idea, I don't know if those fans are powerful enough, but uh, it's not that hard to really get the room situated in such a manner, but um, so give it a whirl and uh, you know, at the end, I won't really know had it, anything be different, but uh, it's not that hard of an extra step to make sure that as little amount of dust gets through the little cracks and crevices through these doors. Because I'm doing dealing with such a fine grit sandpaper, this stuff's just gonna like float in the air. So I've also got all my sandpapers, steel wool. We'll talk about that in a second. Goggles, because I don't want this stuff getting in my eyes, and. A mask and then underneath the table this is what the steel wool is for as you can tell there's already a piece there I'm going over this just to polish all that iron up because when you get it stock it has a bunch of oil on it that gets off on your fingers and it's shiny and it's greasy and this steel wool is gonna polish it up get all that oil off so you don't get on your clothes and on your shoes and whatnot so back to making the room a negative pressure so the windows in the exterior rooms, all the rooms that are connected to this room, are open so that as the air gets sucked out of this room and pushed out outside, the air, and it comes through all the cracks and all the doors here, the air can very easily fill up in the other rooms. Now why is that important? I had a friend that had a water pressure issue on his house, and he was like, dude, it's totally the city's fault. They gotta upgrade their system, da 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 da. He's like, I've got a filter into the house at this filter container outside of his house for the water supply coming in. I told him, check that, just all you gotta do is actually pull it. Well, cause the thing was he would have full pressure, turn on his shower and he'd have full pressure for like 30 minute, 30 seconds to a minute and then it would just die out close to a trickle, not nearly enough for a shower. So told him, pull that filter and just give it a whirl and see what happens. Uh, he didn't he was like, oh, I don't know that it should totally work Why would that slow things down? So this is what happens. You have to think of things in different chambers. I've got Let's look at these rooms and also his water system chamber chamber right next to each other. In fact I'll do A little picture uh, Whatever um, two chambers right next to each other a tiny little box in between the two a tiny little opening between the two chambers this chamber over here is fully open on one end. This chamber over here has a little opening that pulls air through. Now if this little opening that pulls air through can pull air through faster than it can get through the little opening to get into it from the other room, then this will get to a negative pressure. Now if this other room over here that has the wide opening, if it had an opening smaller than the opening between the two rooms, then it would not actually fill back in with new air. It would actually become, over time, 
the same pressure as the original room. Now, why is that important? What that basically means is you're not going to get the airflow. And what I need in this room is airflow through those fans. So I leave everything open in the opposite room, like this second chamber, open door would just fill up quickly so that I can actually get some airflow coming through those cracks so the dust doesn't try to make its way back into the other rooms. So that's my story. Uh, and uh, I'll get back with the finished video. We'll talk a little bit about how I designed the underside here. And uh, for anybody that sees this video, if they are interested in having one of these, uh, looking at probably charging anywhere from $4,000 to $5,000 if you want me to do it. Otherwise, you can watch the videos, kind of base it off your own stuff, and uh, send me questions. So, talk to you later. This is Connor Hill with Engineering Your Life. Have fun.